once again, and we're going to wade right into the Todd Aiken controversy. I'm not going to rehatch all of it, of course. Uh, you likely have seen it on the news over the last week, and if you've been paying any attention to politics at all, you certainly have heard about his comments in terms of uh, so-called uh, legitimate rape and abortion and all that. I'm not going to go into all of that this week, but uh, uh, I do find it a little bit interesting because this show is taped in the great state of Missouri. And so for all of the national ballyhoo over this issue and all of the East Coast liberal commentators and West Coast liberal commentators just castigating Todd Aiken over this whole thing, the bottom line is that none of those people will have any effect on this whatsoever. The only people who will have an effect on this race are the people who are voting right here in the great state of Missouri, people like me. And so I want to talk a little bit to the voters of the state of Missouri uh, this week here on America's Evil Genius. Uh, you know, there have been calls and, and, and uh, those sorts of things for Todd Aiken to step down and uh, to be replaced by another candidate, but to this point, Aiken has said he's not going to do that. So I think at this point, we have to at least assume that Aiken's going to be there at the end. So the question is, do we vote for him? Should his comments disqualify him in the minds of voters? Should voters who were originally going to vote for Todd Aiken suddenly now flip their vote and vote for Claire McCaskill instead? I would say the answer to that is a pretty clear no. Now, make no mistake, I disagree with Aiken's comments on so-called legitimate rape and the medically inaccurate statements he made about the female body being able to reject a pregnancy uh, conceived in that manner. Uh, I, I do disagree with all those things. I think they were, you know, over the line. I think they were misguided. I think they were a poor choice of words. I think they were asinine. And any number of other adjectives you want to attach to those things. Now, I'm not going to say that I disagree with Aiken's stance on uh, abortions in terms of rape, but I do disagree with some of the uh, reasoning he used to get there. So that's where I stand on the issue. But that being said, uh, in this election, as with everything else in life when you think about it, we can only make decisions among the alternatives that we know are available. Would I rather have a candidate that did not say what Todd Aiken said? Oh, of course. But in this case, we have two candidates. We have Todd Aiken, we have, uh, we have Claire McCaskill, the sitting senator. So I have to make a choice between those two. Now, as I take a step back and I look at the entire force instead of just the trees that are in front of me, I realize that this little controversy is happening over something that I consider to be a somewhat minor issue when it comes to the big picture. While abortion in and of itself is an important issue, I don't consider it, especially in terms of uh, the, the somewhat minor number of, of abortions in case of rape, I think that is a bit of a minor issue when it comes to the big picture, when it comes to the issues that we see in this election year. I don't see that as a huge issue when compared to issues like the economy or compared to issues like the overall size and scope of government, or when compared to issues such as the repeal of Obamacare, or when compared to issues such as illegal immigration. And for my money on those important issues, Aiken has it all over McCaskill, even now. The misguided comments about rape and, and abortion don't affect that fact one iota. Now, Claire McCaskill has, in this election, been trying to distance herself a little bit from President Barack Obama. That's a smart political move, and frankly, it's her only hope in this state, in my estimation. But the fact remains that she was, from the outset, one of the most vocal cheerleaders for the entire Obama agenda. For that big government agenda that he promoted, she was right there promoting it. She was on all the talk shows that week or two right after he got elected, just trumpeting how great all of this was going to be. And she was the person that cast the deciding vote in favor of Obamacare. Now, I'm sorry, if I'm going to compare a few misguided and medically inaccurate comments versus someone who was the deciding vote for freaking Obamacare, I'm sorry, McCaskill is far worse when you compare those two political sins. She's also consistently advocated the largest unfunded entitlement in American history. She has not backed off of her support for Obamacare at all. She's never apologized for it. She's never backed down from it. She's never said, if I had it to do over again, I wouldn't do it. She's tied to Obamacare. That makes her someone you simply cannot vote for. Now, on the other hand, if you look at Todd Aiken's career, he has been very consistent in his positions, not only on cutting spending, which is important, but also in cutting government. I remember a few months back during the primary season, I attended a uh, debate among the three Republican primary candidates for the Senate seat at the time, Todd Aiken, Sarah Steelman, Jim Bruner. And good little debate, educational little thing we, we got to see there. And I remember during that debate that the question was asked of all three candidates, uh, what are the first three 
government agencies you would cut when you got to Washington. And Todd Akin, among the ones he said, was the Department of Education. And I mean, when he said that, the roof practically came off of the building. I mean, that crowd exploded when they heard that. Very clearly, Todd Akin is a guy who is serious about cutting government. He's serious about realizing that government is not the answer to all of our problems. In fact, it's really not an answer to very many of them. And if you look at his career, he's also been very critical of things like student loans and, and critical of the very idea of Social Security. Frankly, Aiken is someone who, in terms of cutting government, has been saying things and taking positions in his career that I have been begging a candidate to take for years, that I have been waiting for a candidate of some party, either party, to take. Republicans, by and large, don't take the positions he takes. He's a little bit further to the right than a lot of them, and I think that's refreshing. So frankly, I am willing to accept a bit of a hiccup on a comparatively minor issue so long as the candidate is correct on the major issues. I mean, let's face it. Whatever your political affiliation is, whatever your ideology is, whatever your party is, whatever your beliefs are, you will never find a political candidate that is 100% in line with you. There's always going to be something. But you know, we, the best thing we can do, because we only can make decisions among the alternatives we have available, the best thing we can do is try to find the candidate who is as close to us as can be, as close to that 100% as they can be, and vote for them. And frankly, if you go out there and find a candidate who's 90% of where you are or 95% of where you are, you ought to be pretty happy. And I think Todd Aiken falls into that boat. I think Aiken is, if I were to estimate it, probably 90% of where I am politically, maybe 95%. So I'm still willing to vote for him. I'm still willing to support him, despite this unfortunate, misguided, and asinine set of statements that he, that he gave. On the major issues in this election, Aiken is right, and McCaskill is 100% wrong. Given McCaskill's positions and record on the important issues, I'd vote for practically anybody against her, and certainly Todd Aiken. The bottom line is this. If you are in favor of Obamacare, if you helped craft it, if you helped bring it to light, if you have not backed down from it, then simply, I cannot vote for you, period. I don't care what your opponent has said. I don't care what asinine statements your opponent has made. Claire McCaskill is for Obamacare, therefore, you cannot vote for her. It's the unforgivable political sin. Now, can Aiken still win? I think he can. Let's face it. Obama is practically a four-letter word in outstate Missouri. People cannot stand him. And Claire McCaskill is very easy to link to him. I know she's trying to, to break that link a little bit in her campaign, but it's still there. The record is there. And Obamacare is still there. And she voted for it. Now, as this blows over a little bit in the next couple of weeks, it'll never go completely away. But as it dies down a little bit, all the Aiken campaign has to do is reattach McCaskill to Obama, and Aiken picks up that outstate vote. When he picks up that outstate vote, he's going to win. And when he wins, you watch the East Coast and the West Coast and all the liberal news networks and all the newspapers, you watch them go apoplectic. I'm going to have a bucket of popcorn and a six-pack of beer, and I'm going to enjoy watching them just crap all over themselves at this thing. I'm still behind Todd Aiken, and you should be too. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.